Hi, I'm Miss Josepha from DeWitt District Library and as part of the sustainability series that we've been running through April into May, I'm going to be talking to you about how to make paper, recycling paper. I've put together some paper making kits. This is an example of one um, that people have been able to pick up from the library so that you can participate in a program to learn how to recycle paper. I'm going to take you through the different formats of frames and how you could make your paper. This is the actual frame and this is a decal. Sometimes you hear about paper that's got the decal edge around it. This is how you can create that. You're going to lift pulp up onto your frame with this decal on and then when you remove the decal you have a square of paper sitting in your frame here. And that's what you tip out onto either a felt or onto a surface that where you can leave the paper to dry. I like to use that technique. Some of the papers that you can see in the back here, I've made by laying a sequence of papers on top of each other. They have things embedded in them. Sometimes I put natural objects in there and put the paper over the top to hold them in. Sometimes I'll use a frame that's a different shape so that I can introduce what you can see in the back here as the different circles. Sometimes when I put my paper all together, I end up folding it to make a kind of accordion book. Add lots and lots of different pieces of paper together, add different colors, um, drop things into your pulp that give it texture, different leaves and seeds. In uh, some of your packs you have uh, wildflower seeds that you can introduce into your pulp and you could even plant your paper in the garden as a way of um, introducing those seeds so that they don't blow away into other areas. With your frame and decal I also gave you some uh, screens. These screens are just the window screens that you put up to prevent the flies coming into the house and these act as a really good um, screen for collecting the pulp and letting a lot of the water drop out. I have another frame here to show you. Um, basically this is where you attach the frame like this to the bottom of your big deep mold. It comes with a screen to go over this one again so that it holds your pulp and your paper and lets the water drip through. The advantage of this kind of style of frame is that you submerge all of this into water and when you have made your pulp you can just use a jug of pulp to pour inside here. It makes it a lot easier to arrange the pieces that you might want to uh, still add into your paper and then you just lift this out of the water, let it drain and remove this big section from the top and your paper will be sitting on here. They are really quite neat little um, frames if you want to work um, with more inclusions in your paper. Some of my paper um, at the top there I have a piece that um, I like to introduce lots of different types of leaves overlapping one another and it becomes quite a thick collage of pieces. Um, I will use a frame that is a poor mold rather than the dipping into the basin kind of mold. I make paper from recycled bits and pieces but I also have tried making paper with actual plant fibers. This can be quite hard work if you're beginning um, to make paper because you have to pulverize the fibers to get them. Here are a couple of examples of paper that I've made using iris leaves and lily leaves. The way paper is made is that the cellulose and the fibers within the plant is what breaks down and then binds together to make things. This is like um, the beginning of a book um, made completely from iris, iris fibers and it has these um, stems inside to act as a spine and at some point I will actually add paper signatures inside here to make um, 
a book. A lot of the papers um, you can use different colored pulps. I now have paints that uh, will dye the pulp so when we're working together we'll be able to add sort of some different colors in. I use cookie cutters sometimes like a cook just a shape or in this instance it's a butterfly and with that you can uh, turkey baster uh, suck up your pulp and then you can just pour it like squidge it into your cookie cutter and that'll attach to your paper too so there's lots of fun ways to make interesting shapes and collage together different colors I'm going to show you some of the fibers that I like to use they might surprise you I collect dried banana skins. They look gross, but they smell delicious. It's just like dried banana. You can soak this um, and the fibers from the banana skins will also make a very interesting paper. I like to recycle best. So I select my papers where I see anything without any text on it. I will collect those papers because if you use a lot of heavily printed paper to recycle, it'll go a little gray and muddy um, because the printing ink might affect what you're doing. Um, so when you're recycling, I would suggest don't use anything that's too heavily printed. We are going to go now and make some pulp. Well, here I am in the kitchen where I feel like a little safer in making lots of mess because paper making is definitely a wet process. You're going to have a lot of fun with this. <laughs> Sometimes I even do it in the garden. To recycle the paper, the first thing you need, of course, is a collection of paper. I have some here that has already been shredded. This is going to reduce the um, work you have to do tearing up the paper with your fingers. I have some light blue that has been shredded and I have some light pink that's been shredded and I've also got my white paper here ready for breaking up into little pieces to go into the blender. The first thing is to make sure that you have a blender. I have a second hand one so that I can just dedicate it to paper making because I'm pretty messy. So I'm going to try this blue one first, I'm going to take a handful maybe make it a little smaller if I can. I maybe should have brought some scissors. So you can see how much pulp is in here and then maybe two cups of water. There we go. That'll do us. About two thirds full. Of course, always remember to have your lid on because it'll shout out at you. What I like about this blender is that it's going to do the cycling for me. Going a nice blue. looks like a liquid. I don't see any left of um, the shredded. There's a little bit of the text in there um, and then we're going to just pour that into our bucket. To do this you're going to need enough pulp that is deep enough in your tub to be able to submerge your frame, move it underneath and lift it up. I've now finished blending the blue shredded paper and you can see that my green tub is now pretty full of this pulp mixture. I want to share a little tip with you because one of the things you'll find is that in order for your blender to work safely, you have to put a good proportion of water with the shredded paper. Once you've finished filling up your tub, you might find that there's quite a lot of water in comparison to the actual pulp. So I will leave it to sit for a short time and then I can skim off just the water from the top. This is really more water than pulp and I'll do that just to take off excess water. 
That way you're going to end up with um, a basin of pulp that is a nice thickness consistency for you to make your paper from. Well, with this blue pulp, I have actually thought that I might add some of these delphinium flowers that I have been collecting um, as the delphiniums dried last year. I think this blue flower will create a nice texture with the actual blue um, pulp as well. So that's the pulp I'm going to use for one of the papers. Now I have been soaking the banana skins because I guess that maybe you might like to make paper with banana skins since I showed them to you. So they've been um, soaking and we're going to add these into the blender with some white paper that we're going to pulp up. I wanted to wait and show you what kind of size. Really, you're talking about little squares. I've got these strips and I'm going to tear like that kind of size. <laughs> Just this sort of size. So we're going to put some of this in our blender. And we're going to put some banana skin. Maybe a little bit more paper. Same amount of water. And we'll see what we get. I turned my blender down a little bit rather than going straight to the high setting just so that it had some time to maybe break up those fibers a little bit more. Mm, interesting color. stop it there so that you can look at it because when you're making and mixing your pulps you might want to judge do you want all of your fibers broken down completely or would you like to keep some texture you might be able to see that I have in here what I would call texture I like this <laughs> I am going to continue to fill a tub of white paper with banana skins in it. Okay, see you later. I thought it might be fun to see another pulp that you can make with an easily accessible material. And that is onion skin. So I'm a terrible forager and sometimes you might find me in Myers picking up the onion skins from the area where they all fall off the onions. <laughs> going in the blender and a handful of paper, recycled paper. Working with just the fibers from plants is um, a little tricky to get enough of the cellulose to create your paper. So you can always use a base of recycled paper to make it work. So here we go, let's add the water. I'm going to go on a lower setting. The brown onion skins make a beautiful yellow colored paper. I like this though, this is pretty. Just take a look at that at the moment. Isn't that pretty? I think I quite like it with those bigger chunks in it. I think I might keep that one. Maybe we should try one where it's broken down a little bit more. Put some more paper in. And another handful of onion skin. All 
the time you're making judgments about what might be exactly what you're looking for and I'm sure you'll meet lots of surprises. So we've been working on this pulp with a little more onion skin in and made it blend for a little longer and I'm thinking we'll blend it even some more and see if it'll break down. This is the colour of the first one. And this is the colour of the second one. You can see how much darker it is and it still has a lot of texture in it. So I am looking forward to making papers with those pulps. For now, before I finish this video, I thought I'd show you a couple of the papers. This is paper with um, seeds inside. That's how that one looks. This is like the light blue paper and it has um, pieces of iris leaf in it, I think. This is one of those pieces where it has a lot of the leaves all um, embedded inside. Um, sometimes when you're using inclusions from flowers, they'll leave a residue of color. Sometimes it bleeds in and out and it can be a really nice effect. Um, it's not always what you're looking for, but it's like I say, you get a lot of surprises. I wanted to show you this one because like I've been using onion skin and um, banana skin, this one is using coffee grounds and it has a really nice effect. It gives you a really bobbly texture. I like that one a lot. So this is the end of this introduction to paper making and how to make your pulps with a blender and recycled paper. And the next video, I'll be showing you how to make your actual paper using the frame and decal in your paper making kit. Thanks. Bye.